China is one of the countries with the longest history in the world. China is one of the developing countries which has the world's second largest economy and has the world's largest manufacturer and agriculture. These two industries are important factors to promote and support the development and the foundation of China's economy. In this video, I will analyze China's development from the perspective of economic development and human development and think about which development method is better for an Austrian firm to use in establishing the princess in China. Meanwhile, I will find out the industries China is specialized in based on the classic trade methods. For economic development, according to the World Bank statistics, China's GNI per capita PPP has increased to $16,740 in 2018 to around $980 in 1990. It shows the average before tax income of a Chinese has largely improved within 19 years. For human development, China's HDI for 2018 is 0.758, which is positioning at 85 out of 189 countries and territories in the high human development category. China's HDI is calculated from three dimensions of life expectancy at birth, educational level, and the standard of living. Firstly, Chinese life expectancy at birth in 1960 to 2018 has increased from 43.725 years to 76.704 years which reflects the Chinese newborn infant has a larger growth in life if a perennial pattern of mortality at the time of its birth were to stay the same throughout its life. Given the scale of its territory and the population at a relatively low gene life per capita level, this indices increase shows us China's public health services has improvement which particularly in infant and maternal health. In 2008, China achieved a millennium development goal of reducing child uh, mortality by 237 years ahead of schedule. World Bank data indices that Chinese mortality rate for children under 5 fell from 53.8 per thousand to 10.7 per thousand between 1990 and 2015. Um, meanwhile, the mortality rate for adults fell from 151 per thousand to 85 per thousand and is also a factor to increase in Chinese life expectancy level. Secondly, the level of China educational attainment is on risk. The China's expected year of schooling in 1960 to 2018 has increased from 8.8 .8 years to 30.9 years. To ensure that all women and men have equal access to affordable and high-quality technology, vocational and higher education, including university education. However, the mean years of schooling is 7.9 years, which means the average number of years of education received by people aged 25 and older are not reached the expected. Because the part of poverty-stricken population may not have accepted the higher education, such as the children in mountain areas do not have learning conditions, but this number is kept increasing and closing to the expected as according to the Ministry of Education. China's government spending on education above 4% of GDP for seven consecutive years. Uh, the Chinese government educational budget expenditure in 2018 is nearly 3.7 trillion yuan. An increase of 8.15% year on year and accounting for 4.11% of GDP. This will help the average educational level of the Chinese people to improve year by year. Educational attainment as an advanced factor which determines Chinese competitive advantage through skilled labor and training of higher educational talents. Therefore, the Chinese competitive advantage will grow with education. Thirdly, the standard of living, China's GNI per capita PPP has increased to $16,740 in 2018 from $980 in 1990. The per capita disposable income of Chinese residents is increasing year by year. It also means the standard of living for Chinese residents are getting better. Although the gap with high income countries is very large, such as Australia with $51,560 in 2018, China as a developing country has already been beyond some other developing countries such as Indonesia with 11,256 in 2018. According to the graph, in 2019, the per capita consumption expenditure food, tobacco and alcohol was 28.2% in China, with an increase of 8%. However, per capita consumption of Chinese uh, people outside of base needs account for 71.8% with an increase of more than 8%, such as children's education, healthcare, or transportation. 
It proves the basic needs of Chinese people have been met. Based on above, the human development is of good significance to an Australian form in considering establishing a princess in China. As the economic development, which only uses the GNI per capita based on GDP to analyze China's economic activity, but it do not always reflect all of information of China and more like a static picture of development. For example, it ignores the demographic within a population, the high-income areas such as Shanghai to that level up, and misleading the Australian form to make wrong decisions. If an Australian firm wants to establish a business in China, it has to use human development because the HDI was created to emphasize that people and their capabilities should be the ultimate yardstick for assessing a country's development, not just economic growth. Three dimensions show the majority factors of China's development to help the Australian firm to establish its presence in China. China is now one of the main drivers of global growth. China is a developing country, so it has a comparative advantage in labor-intensive goods and geography, and also absolute advantage such as cheaper labor cost. This determines that China will develop into a number of different industries with its advantages. China is called the world's factory, its manufacturing industry is very developed, which makes and sells a variety of manufacturing goods such as textiles. China is the world's largest producer and exporter of textiles, according to the revealed comparative advantage and the currently finger similarity indices, which results China has a higher share in the world exports of both textiles and clothing. While other textiles and clothing producing country India has a comparative advantage in women's clothing of various sorts and men's shirts. The comparative advantage of China's textile industry is largely dependent on its solid industrial foundation and low cost. The most important comparative advantage is the labor source, because the Chinese labor has two main features. The first is at its lower cost and superior quality. The average educational level of Chinese labor force is 10 years, which is the median level of developing countries, but four years behind the developed countries. However, the salaries of Chinese labor are much lower than in other countries, approximately seven times the U.S. minimum wages in 2017. The second feature is Chinese labor sustainability. With the educational level Chinese increases, it provides more and more high quality and cheaper younger labor. Uh, therefore, the continuous supply of talents will provide labor and technical support for the future development of China's textile industry. On the other hand, China has absolute advantage in material supply to support its textile industry due to the special status and resource advantages of Chinese agriculture. China has always been the world's largest producer of cotton, cloth, yam, and natural fibers. Meanwhile, an abandoned natural fibers and the fast development of the chemical fiber industry has brought superior advantages to the Chinese textile industry. China's total cotton production accounts for 25 of the world's total, and its fabric production ranks first in the world. The production of other materials is also higher than other countries. China also has a competitive advantage in agriculture. Firstly, China has an absolute advantage in the existing natural resource. Land is the most basic factor of production and has a very important impact on agricultural development. China is a vast land which accounts for about 11% of the entire Asia, only behind Canada. Since approximately 70% of China's uh, land area is located in subtropical zone, warm temperate zone, and a temperate area, this is conductive to large-scale agricultural production in China. Secondly, China has a comparative advantage in labor resource, as China has nearly 300 million Chinese farmers, which is larger than the entire population of every country, except China, India, and the U.S. Thirdly, China exports its agricultural products at a low price in the international market. Meanwhile, China government is actively raising the funds to promote the agricultural technology development and the product quality and improvement in order to increase the comparative advantage in the international market.